All right, so let's dive in here. Um, imagine you're trying to build math like from scratch. From the ground up. Yeah, not just like solving equations, but figuring out what numbers even are. Right. And how they like connect to each other using like, the most basic like logic rules. Yeah. It's kind of a mind-bending idea. It really is. And that's exactly what we're getting into today. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to be exploring this monumental work Principia Mathematica. Principia Mathematica. By Alfred North Whitehead and Bertrand Russell. Okay, so for everyone listening, you know, we've talked about some pretty interesting stuff recently. We have. About like the foundation of knowledge and different systems we use to understand the world. Yeah. How does Principia Mathematica fit into all of that? So you can think of Principia Mathematica as like this really ambitious attempt to build a solid foundation for math. Okay. You know, one of our most important knowledge systems, yeah. Whitehead and Russell, they wanted to show that mathematical truths, they weren't just these abstract ideas floating around. They could be super rigorously derived from pure logic. So they wanted to build math on top of logic. Exactly. They wanted to give it a really strong logical base. Okay. So I guess our mission today is to try and understand what exactly Whitehead and Russell were trying to do with this huge project. Right. How they even tackled something this big and why people still think it's so important today. Absolutely. We're talking about like taking math and breaking it all the way down using only basic logic. Right down to the bare minimum. Yeah. And then see what impact that had, right? Yeah, a huge impact. Okay. So where do we even begin with something like this? Well, I think it's helpful to set the scene a little bit. Okay. When was Principia Mathematica published? Who were these guys? Yeah. Principia Mathematica came out in three volumes. Wow. Between 1910 and 1913. Okay. That was the first edition. Yeah. And that's the one that really changed everything. Got it. Now, the copy you shared is actually a later impression of the second edition. It's from the 1920s, but all the main ideas we'll talk about were already there in that first edition. Right. Uh, the authors, as you said, were Alfred North Whitehead and Bertrand Russell. Yeah. And Russell was a fellow of the Royal Society. That's a big deal, right? Yeah. Which shows how important he was in the intellectual world back then. So these weren't just some random guys messing around with ideas. Oh, no, no. They were serious thinkers. Absolutely leading thinkers of their time. Okay. So what was the big question they were going after? Well, their main goal was to prove this really close connection between math and formal logic. Okay. They believed that math wasn't its own separate thing, mm. but that it was actually a part of logic. So everything we learn in math class, like all those equations and theorems. Yeah, all of it. It can all be traced back to logic. That's what they believed. But how do you even go about proving something like that? Well, their idea was to derive every single mathematical truth. Every single one. From just a tiny set of axioms. Axioms. And very strict rules of inference, all within a carefully built system of formal logic. Okay, wait, break that down for me. Sure. Imagine you have a few super basic truths. Okay. Things that are just undeniably true. Like what? Like it, if A is true, then A is true. Okay, sure. They wanted to start with as few of these as possible. Those are the axioms. Exactly. And then they would use logic, like a set of really specific rules, yeah. to build up the whole structure of math from those axioms. So it's like starting with a few basic building blocks. Yeah. And using logic as the instructions to build something much bigger. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So why did they think this was even possible or necessary? Maybe. I mean, was there something going on in the world of math at the time? Well, at the beginning of the 20th century, there was this big push for rigor in mathematics. Rigor. Yeah, mathematicians had found these paradoxes, things that didn't make sense. Like contradictions. Exactly. And those paradoxes made people question some of the basic ideas of math. So it was kind of a crisis. You could say that and Principia Mathematica was their attempt to fix it. Yeah, they wanted to put math back on solid ground. By using logic as the foundation. Exactly. Logic seemed like the most reliable tool to do that. So they had this big vision. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Sure. You mentioned axioms. What exactly are they in this context and how do they use formal logic? So in this case, axioms are basically self-evident truths. Okay. Or assumptions that you don't need to prove. Because they're so obvious. Yeah, they're like the starting point. And they wanted to use as few as possible. Right. The absolute minimum number of axioms. Got it. So they're like the bare minimum you need to get started. Exactly. And then formal logic comes in. Yeah, that's the system they use to build on those axioms. So it's a set of rules for making logical arguments. Precisely. Very strict rules. No room for error. Right. And they use symbols to represent everything. Oh, wow. So it wasn't just like regular reasoning. 
No, it was very precise, almost mechanical. Like a computer program? Kind of. Yeah. So give me an example of one of these rules. Okay, so a very basic rule might be yeah. if A implies B okay. and A is true, right. then B must also be true. That makes sense. They had specific symbols for implies and true, all those things. So their whole system was built on these symbols. Yeah, it was a new way of writing things down. And then they used these rules to go from one statement to the next. That's right. Step-by-step -step deduction. Like a chain of logic. Exactly. Each step had to follow the rules perfectly. And their goal was to show how you could get all of math this way. Well, all the math that was known at the time. So we're not just talking about like basic arithmetic here. No, they wanted to include everything. Wow. Number theory, geometry, even early calculus. So basically all the major areas of math. Yeah, it was a massive project. Okay, so what was the impact of all this? Did they actually achieve their goal? Well, Principia Mathematica had a huge impact, even if it didn't completely achieve everything they set out to do. Okay. It completely changed how we think about logic. It made symbolic logic much more advanced and gave us a really powerful way to do formal reasoning. And that's still important today, right? Oh, yeah, especially in things like computer science, linguistics, and philosophy. So this work laid the groundwork for how we think about logic and information in the digital age. Exactly. The formal languages we use in computers today. Wow. They all come from these basic ideas of symbolic logic. Okay, so that's a pretty big impact right there. Yeah, and it also had a big effect on the philosophy of mathematics. What do you mean? It made philosophers really think about what mathematical truth even is. Like, where does it come from? Yeah, is it something we discover or something we create through logic? That's a big question. It is, and it led to all sorts of debates about the nature of knowledge in general. And you said earlier that Principia Mathematica is considered a landmark of the century. That's right. Why is that? Because it was the first book to really show the deep connection between math and logic. By actually trying to derive math from logic. Exactly. They showed that these two fields, which seemed so different, yeah. were actually closely related. So it was a huge intellectual achievement. It really was. And you also mentioned that no other book has had such a big impact on mathematical philosophy. It set the agenda for a lot of the 20th century work in that field. Wow. Even people who disagreed with Whitehead and Russell. Yeah. They were still working within the framework that Principia Mathematica established. So it was a real turning point. Absolutely. A major shift in how people thought about math. Okay. But I imagine a project this big and complex must have had some challenges along the way. Oh, for sure. What were some of the hurdles? Well, first of all, just the sheer size of it. Three volumes. Yeah, it was an enormous amount of work. I can imagine. And then there were some problems with their own starting assumptions. What do you mean? One of their axioms, the axiom of reducibility. Okay. Turned out to be pretty controversial. What was controversial about it? Well, some logicians argued that it wasn't really a logical principle. But more like a mathematical assumption. Exactly, and they said it snuck in some math without proving it. So it weakened their claim that they were deriving everything from pure logic. Yeah, it raised questions about how solid their foundation really was. And were there other challenges? Well, later on, Kurt Gödel came along. Another mathematician. A brilliant logician. Okay. And he proved these things called the incompleteness theorems. Incompleteness theorems. These theorems showed that any system of logic, yeah. as powerful as the one in Principia Mathematica, right. would always have some true statements that it couldn't prove. So there were limits to what they could achieve. Exactly. No matter how hard they tried, their system couldn't prove everything. And this came after Principia Mathematica? Yeah, it was published in the 1930s. But it was still really important, right? Oh, absolutely. It changed how we understand the foundations of math. So even though Principia Mathematica was this huge achievement, yeah. it turned out there were still some fundamental limits to what it could do. Right. Gödel's work showed that there are some things we just can't prove within certain systems. So it was a bit of a humbling realization for mathematicians. In a way, yes. Okay, so let's recap for our listeners. Mm -hmm. What are the key takeaways from all of this? All right, so first, Principia Mathematica was a groundbreaking attempt to formalize all of math. Okay. It was a massive undertaking, and it had a huge impact. Yeah. Second, it established this really deep connection between math and logic. And changed how we view that relationship. Right. Okay. Third, it had a lasting influence on the philosophy of math. Shaping how people thought about the big questions. Exactly. You know? 
And finally, even though it was so ambitious, it did face some challenges. Like the axiom of reducibility in Gödel's incompleteness theorems. Exactly. Showing that even when we try to build the most rigorous system, yeah. there's still going to be limits and complexities. Right. There are some things we just can't capture in a formal system. That's a pretty powerful thought. So here's something for our listeners to consider. This idea of wanting to find a fundamental basis. Yeah. Like those axioms in math. Right. This desire to build a complete system from the ground up. Yeah. Do you see that in other areas of knowledge too? Mm. That's an interesting question. Like are there other fields where people are trying to find the basic building blocks? I'm sure there are. And do they run into the same kind of limitations? It's worth thinking about. Yeah. What does it tell us about the nature of knowledge itself? It's a deep question. Maybe something for everyone to explore on their own. Yeah, I like that. All right, thanks for joining me for this deep dive into Principia Mathematica. It's been a pleasure. It's always fascinating to explore these big ideas. Absolutely. Until next time, happy exploring. See you then.